All right, welcome to Integral Physics. Today I'm gonna to be talking about one of the most common problems that you run into when first learning about Newton's laws in physics. And that is a situation where we have a block connected by a string which runs over a pulley to a hanging mass. And what we're gonna be doing today is solving for the acceleration of these two blocks when they're released from rest, as well as the tension which is in the string connecting the two blocks. Now there's a lot of variations on this problem. Some of those variations involve friction between this block and this table. Others have friction on this pulley or mass on the pulley. We're gonna keep this as simple as we possibly can. So today we're gonna to look at the simple version of this problem where there is no friction between the block and the table, where the table is nice and level, and where we have no friction or mass up here at the pulley. But to get started, what I wanna do is go through and draw a free body diagram for each of these blocks individually. So starting with this block. there are three forces which act on this block. The first force being gravity acting downward on the block. Now because this block has some mass m1, this could be any value we want it to be or any value that's given to us in a problem, the force downward by gravity is simply going to be its mass m1 multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, or m1g. And because this block is sitting on a level surface, and because it's not accelerating vertically, that means the normal force between this table and the block is going to have to be equal in magnitude to the force downward by gravity. And we know these two forces are equal in magnitude because they must cancel each other out, otherwise this block will accelerate vertically. And the third force which is acting on this block is the tension from this string right here, which is acting to the right on the block. And I'm just gonna call that T for tension. Now in order to work out a solution to this problem, we're gonna to have to look not just at the forces acting on a single block, but at the forces acting on both blocks, which means we need to draw a free body diagram for this block down here as well. Now this hanging block only has two forces acting on it. The first being gravity. And the second being the tension in the string, which is pulling the block upward. Now when looking at this hanging block, it's tempting to say that the tension in the string is going to be equal in magnitude to the weight of the hanging block, but it's not, so let me explain why. See, if these two forces were equal in magnitude, that means the net force on this block would be zero, and therefore it would not accelerate. And nothing seems problematic about that situation in looking at just this block, but let's go back to this block up here, which is sitting up on this surface. Realize, if there's any tension in the string whatsoever, there's going to be an unbalanced force on this block horizontally, which means this block, really the block I've drawn here, is going to move to the right, or accelerate to the right. And if this block accelerates to the right, that means this block must accelerate downward. So there's no way to have this block accelerating and this block being stationary. Therefore, the tension in the string cannot equal the weight of that hanging block. Now remember what we're trying to do here, and that is to solve for the acceleration of these two blocks, as well as the tension in the string which connects the blocks together. So in order to solve for the acceleration of this system, we're going to need to use Newton's second law to set up a system of equations. Now the catch is, forces and acceleration are vectors, so we need to have positive and negative directions to talk about. And you'll notice, this block is going to be accelerating to the right, while this block will be accelerating downward. Because they're connected by the string, they'll both have the same magnitude of acceleration, but they're going to be accelerating in different directions. And so what we're going to do in this problem in order to coordinate the motion of these two blocks is we're going to come up with what we're going to call a positive direction of motion. And that positive direction of motion is going to be like this, to the right for this block and downward for this block. And I know that seems strange when you're coming out of something like kinematics, where you would say up and to the right are typically positive. Um, this is a little bit different, but realize because the motion of these two blocks is coupled together, we have to have a way to talk about the positive motion of both blocks at the same time. So now what we're gonna do is apply Newton's second law to each of these blocks individually in order to relate their masses to the forces which are acting on the blocks as well as their accelerations. Now looking at the block which is sitting up on the table first, you'll remember the force downward by gravity cancels out with the normal force. So ultimately the net force on this block is simply going to be the tension. So writing out Newton's second law, sum of all forces equals ma. We're simply going to have the tension as the sum of all forces acting on this block. And that is going to equal m1a, 
where A is the acceleration of this block to the right. Applying Newton's second law to this block, we now have two competing forces which don't cancel each other out. And this is where we have to be particularly careful. You'll remember, we said over here that the downward motion of this block was going to be positive. So when we're setting up the sum of all forces on this block, we're going to have M2G in the positive direction and the tension in the negative direction. Which means our net force is M2G minus T, and that's going to be equal to M2A. So now what we've done using Newton's second law is we've created a system of equations with unknowns. We have two equations and two unknowns, our two unknowns being tension and acceleration. So now to solve for our unknowns, we're simply going to rearrange these equations and substitute them in. Luckily enough, this equation is already arranged for tension. So I'm simply going to substitute in this equation or function for tension right here in this equation. And that's going to leave us with We come up with this, an expression for the acceleration of both of these blocks as a function of their masses and the acceleration due to gravity. Now you'll notice I did this entirely in variables, so if you're dealing with a problem, say on your homework or, or just for fun maybe, uh, where you've got actual values for these masses, you can simply plug them into this equation or formula and it'll spit out the acceleration of the system. Now remember, we're also trying to solve for the tension in the string, and up here we have a rather convenient equation for the tension in the string as a function of the acceleration. So, all I'm going to do is plug this formula in right here for acceleration, and that's going to give me an equation for the tension. So in this problem, we've solved for the acceleration of both blocks as well as the tension in the string connecting those blocks together. But it's dependent on this block having no friction against the level surface which it's resting on, and it's also dependent on this pulley having no mass or friction. Now if you want to see the solutions worked out to more complicated variants of this problem, say with friction between the block and the surface or maybe pulley mass, uh, those videos are recorded and on my channel. Uh, the links are in the description. And on that note, that's all for now.